Hey guys, my name's Holly Baxter, this is Lane Norton, and we are up to week three of my diet for the contest prep. How are you feeling? You freaking out now? Yeah, this has been such a crazy week, actually. You guys have been following this journey along so far. For two weeks, I was dieting really hard, like 600 calories below my um, previous maintenance calories, okay? And very little happened. Now we had some movement. One second, very little. You lost 800 grams. Yeah, total combined for the two weeks of hard dieting, I only lost 800 grams. Your target to lose was 1.2 kilos was the target. Yeah, I, I just did, I wasn't. Nothing was happening. <laughs> so I can hear you grumble every morning you get on the scale. Yeah, I know. I was like an old lady. Get home like nothing's happening, babe. <laughs> What's going on? So this week. Um, it was a funny or an interesting week in that um, we had kind of split my diet break because uh, we had guests flying in um, on a uh, Wednesday so I wanted to be able to capitalize and actually take some of those high days uh, while our friends were here but it was um, the weekend that we we're going away with them was going to mean I was back on my low calories again I definitely didn't want that so the way that we set it up, um, we talked about this last week if you're um, behind on the video series go back and check it out from week one but uh, I took three of my new low days and then I started like a seven day period. When you where, say new low days, you mean? Um, I mean, made my, I made an adjustment to my macros for my dieting weeks. So it's slightly more aggressive than the previous weeks of dieting. So I took three of those days first and then I'm taking my seven days of diet break, which is at my predicted maintenance calories. Interestingly, <laughs> this week, uh, I actually started to drop weight, so sometimes things just don't make sense. So we kind of have a few ideas why this might happen. Lane, do you want to start by giving us some so, details? So first off, you're, you're you're only down by 300 grams on your weight average, but we can look at the the trend. And yes, you were like, what was it? You were like 60 over, just like right at 68, and then you were 67.8, and then you were like 67.5. Yes. So in the last few days, you have gone down like 600 grams. Uh huh. So um, my, my average last week for my weight was 68.4. So this week's average, um, with four high days in there, my bad, uh, is now down at 68.1. But my weight has actually been for the last three days under. So the average doesn't yet reflect this drop. Uh, you know, I think it, it could be a few things. One is you did make an adjustment to your macros, you dropped them lower. Mm -hmm. So it could be that it's more of a delayed response to that adjustment mm -hmm. and that that's reflecting that yes um, the next thing is I have seen people who for whatever reason they'll stall on their on their kind of low days and then they'll have a couple high days and boom they'll and drop after you actually said this happened to you with your contest prep yeah, diet you know, days I didn't do diet breaks you know I contest prep was eight years ago from now. Um, in 2010 <laughs> right, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so I, uh, I I didn't do diet breaks, but I would do high days, yeah. and I would find that sometimes I would actually drop after a high day. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it was I was more regular because of the high day, more fiber or something like that, yeah, or because I had, <laughs> you know, maybe I slept better because I was fuller, you know, my sleep got disrupted during prep, yeah. could have been less stress, like I felt better, mm -hmm. uh, trained harder. Uh, it could also be that, you know, with the diet breaks research, what we're seeing is that um, some, some people, like, you just give them enough to get to maintenance, and it seems like the the increase in metabolic rate mm -hmm. actually exceeds yeah, it supersedes the the calorie amount that they they went up. Mm -hmm. So that could be it too. It doesn't make sense from a physiological perspective, but some things don't always make sense. Mm -hmm. So I think it's it's pretty interesting, regardless of whatever the cause is. And we haven't identified it yet because we we haven't yeah. hooked you up to indirect telemetry and oh, but I would love to do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It appears to be working. Yeah. Uh, you feel good. You said you actually feel physically better right now than yeah. you did last week. Yeah. Um, part of that's probably a, a little bit of a placebo mm -hmm. in that your your weight's dropping, so now you feel more confident. You, you feel better about yourself. So. Yeah, and I think uh, last week was generally a more stressful week. Um, just a lot going on, and um, I think just having that freedom to now eat a little bit more, I guess. It's nice. <laughs> you can sit down at the end of the day and I'm like, oh yeah, give me the 800 calorie dessert. So I don't know. Who knows the cause of this? Uh, there's a lot of unknowns in the nutrition um, and training industry, but it certainly seems to be a trend. I have had a lot of clients doing diet breaks and nothing happens on that initial drop. Give diet, diet, 
I even said this, that you were very nervous about taking this diet break. Yeah, absolutely. And I said, well, you know, you've had clients who mm -hmm. they don't move and then you mm -hmm. put them on a diet break and they start to move. And yeah. sometimes it's important to just trust the process. Yes. And that is exactly what I'm doing. And I'm so happy that I'm not letting my mind get the better of me because it certainly paid off this week. So let's take a quick look at the actual data spreadsheet this week. So you can kind of put some of these figures uh, into play. Hopefully if you are going through a similar process, uh, you can use the table that I'm actually using to help um, make your own adjustments and kind of summarize your week's progress as well. So let's do that now. Alrighty, so just quickly looking here at the screen, you can see uh, the week of the 31st through to, it's actually the 8th. Um, you can see here my average weight is 68.1. And if we come across, um, here are my four high days, which are set at 165, 210, 51. And here are my three low days at 165, 135, and 145. And this column here, if I scroll up, uh, is actually the calorie average for the week. So, so including your high and low days. For, including my high and low days. That's actually kind of irrelevant for this week. Um, what I'm trying to do um, here this week is get my seven days at diet break. And they're kind of rolling over two weeks, which is why it looks extremely messy here. So I've got four in this week. Um, How and then, feel about that? Yeah, I really dislike this mode. <laughs> I'm really struggling, but anyway, it makes sense in my mind. So hopefully you guys can kind of get that. This is the seven day combined high day. And so usually you would take like, I, what we had planned is you would start your diet break at the beginning of one week and it right. should be a solid week. But since we had friends coming into town, you extended your diet just a little bit by three days. Yeah. And then you took your diet break in the middle of the week into the middle of the next week. And that's right. why we have this break. Yeah. Here. So if we have a look at my compliance table, this week is a little bit more complicated because I have um, got those high and low days. So it will look different to previous weeks. This is the previous week that you can see here where it's just got one goal um, calories uh, and then my averages. So this week you'll see two. So looking at the dates here, so let's start from last week. Um, if you look to the left, you can see um, this was Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, etc. Um, so my weight started the week at uh, 68.4 and then I had a 68.1, a 68.5. It didn't weigh in on Sunday. I was probably a little concerned because I'd had a little bit of alcohol that, that day and I might have just not got on the scale for my sanity. <laughs> but that's okay. I still have six data points. Um, Monday I woke up at 68.1 and then I'm dropping. Here's where, I, here's where I've taken my high days, right? So I've had three high days at this point and now I'm under 68, which is awesome. And then I'm at 67.5 uh, on Wednesday, which was my lowest weigh in, in the last few weeks, which is awesome. On the tail end of four high days, which is just really cool. So you can see my compliance. Um, or our entries throughout the week. Um, this is my protein column just here. So 167, I had a high protein day here, but I've substituted that out for some of my other macros. Um, here is 165, 162, 161. So on average, I'm hitting uh, my protein targets pretty consistently and that's reflected over here. Uh, you can see my compliance on both days is 100% and 98% um, on both of my scheduled targets. Uh, if we look at my calories as well, um, I'm 98% compliant on my low days and I was 99% compliant on my high days, which is awesome. But if you take a look at the center columns here with carbs and fats, um, as you look down, you can see my target for my high days is 210, but I'm hitting 198, 184. I had a 2.30 day. Um, that is less important. Um, the ratio of carbohydrates to fats is not as important as me hitting my protein targets and my overall calories. So I do tend to mix up these depending on what my food choices are. It does, um, it creates a little bit more work. I uh, know you've got to kind of sit down and subtract some here, plus some there. Not everyone has the patience for that. Just to, um, just to clarify, the, the research data shows that um, when you swap out carbohydrate for fat, it, it doesn't seem to affect fat loss. Right. It, it, it's, it's your total calories and your protein. Protein is important. So yes. you can't trade out protein and get the same amount of fat loss. No. But if you're hitting the target calories and you're getting enough protein, <clears throat> fat loss seems to be the same between higher carb, lower fat, or lower fat, higher carb, or sorry, lower carb, higher fat. Um, 
but I think it is important to note that it's probably good to try and be consistent because yeah. if you're always flip flopping back and forth, mm -hmm. uh, your body is going to have difficulty getting in the rhythm. Yes. And I think also the thing I want to point out is these calories uh, for your for your uh, diet break are a little bit lower mm -hmm. than what you were doing uh, when you started for maintenance. Yeah. Uh, and this is because, like we talked about this in the contest prep guide, that. Uh, you're supposed to recalculate your diet breaks mm -hmm. based, based on, based on your current diet. state, right? Right. So that's why your calories have gone down because currently, because you've been dieting for two weeks, you can't expect that your maintenance is going to be the same as it was when you began. Right, exactly. So and we, we have all the equations for that in the complete contest prep guide, and one of those is the Mueller equation. So yeah. um, I think that this is a really good uh, sign that you're starting to get some movement. Yes. I think the other thing that it also shows, because this looks a little bit messy when I look at it, but also the fact that there's alcohol there, mm -hmm. um, that is why you're not hitting as close to your carbs and fats, because, you know, unless you want to make a dedicated macro column for alcohol, mm -hmm. um, meaning you're going to hit that every day, yeah. um, you have to take some of your calories from carbohydrates and fats in right. order to account for alcohol, because alcohol has seven calories per gram. Yeah. So I don't, I just want to make sure we're, because there's almost about 500 calories from alcohol there. There is. So, so that's going to come out of carbohydrates and fats. Yes. Does that not make sense on here? Uh, I, I just well, like to clarify. It's, it's bit. actually. For us idiots out there. <laughs> so I've actually calculated this in. So though I don't set a calorie target for alcohol each week, of course, it comes out of my carbs and fats, as Lane's saying. So in my equations here, uh, if I double click this, it's got the function in it. Um, it's bringing up the columns that are actually included in this total calorie count. So it's including protein, it's including carbs, it's including fats, and it's including alcohol. But on these days, it's zero. So it's still, you know, adding up my calories so I can see how my calorie compliance is. Um, but then on the day where I do, it's, it's making sure it's still being included. So right. that's how yes. this all works. But, um, yeah, I, I tend to agree with Lane in that it's... My point being, this is how you can have... Uh, 1900 calories, but only 130 grams of carbs and 39 grams of fat. Oh, yeah. Because there's 71 grams of alcohol. Yes, yes, okay. Sorry about doing my thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Um, Sometimes you get a little bit, uh, ironically, you're getting a little bit wordy. I feel like I'm rubbing off on you. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, that's basically um, how things are uh, for me at the moment. I'm uh, looking forward to another three high days. I've still got three more this week and it enables me to, we're, we're going to go down to the beach this weekend with our friends. Uh, there's probably going to be more alcohol in here. I just want to emphasize like so many people get caught up on the fact that oh, you cannot eat um, junk food or you cannot have alcohol like doing contest prep. like. It's going to get to a point where I will make the decision that those calories are not worth it to me because yeah. they are going to be lower, they're going to be more difficult to adhere to, and I'm going to prefer to eat something than to have a drink, trust me. Yeah. But during these early days... Alcohol's not exactly satiating. Very unsatiating. How, think about how many drinks you could have and you're like, oh, just keep going. Those calories are not satiating at all. So. Um, I think probably as I start to get down to maybe 1400 calories, maybe the lower end of 1500 calories, I'm going to be really making it, maybe probably making different decisions about that. But for now, uh, I don't really feel like it's super difficult for me to save up a little bit extra carbs and fats uh, for an alcoholic drink if I want it. Um, yeah, and the other thing you need to consider as well is how that impacts your training um, the next day. So for this week, just to give you an idea of what I am doing, I would usually train uh, one session every day. So I'll do um, like my cardio on a, one day and then I'll do my weights training on other days. But this week I'm going to have to do a double session one day because I want to take Sunday off because I know if I'm going to have some drinks on Saturday, I'm going to be pretty tired. And that session would therefore be less than optimal. So yeah, just something to consider. But I think that's all for this week. Uh, Lane, do you have anything else you wanted to add? Were we good? No, you actually took the words right out of my mouth. Excellent. <laughs> all right, guys, I hope you're enjoying this fat loss series. Uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, please leave a comment below. Uh, we are getting to a point where this is going to be available. I feel like I've been saying this for a number of weeks, but it's actually really difficult to try and find uh, a mechanism or a method to get this out there without 
you guys being able to stuff it all up. <laughs> no <laughs> offense, but like you can delete formulas and then I, you guys will be like, oh, hey Holly, I deleted this. How do I get it back? Like, so yeah, I'm working through a process to get this available, but have a great week guys and uh, we'll see you next time.